welcome to a very special edition of Somerville Neighborhood News. Uh, we have some really exciting guests in the studio today to talk about the EBT Card to Culture program that the uh, Massachusetts Cultural Council mm -hmm. is, has put together. Um, so according to the Boston Globe, there are more than 758,000 people receiving food assistance through the state via the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, or SNAP the benefits of which are issued through an EBT card. The EBT Card to Culture program is a joint venture between the Department of Transitional Assistance and the Massachusetts Cultural Council and many of the best cultural institutions across the Commonwealth. EBT Card to Culture allows those receiving benefits from DTA to have access to museums, performances, and other cultural programming at a reduced or free cost. And here with me in the studio today to talk about that is Anita Walker, who is executive director of the Massachusetts Cultural Council and who has been since April of 2007, and Leslie Wu Foley, who is interim director of education and community engagement at the Boston Symphony Orchestra. Welcome to the both of you and thank you for joining us today. Thank Pleasure. you for having us. Um, so Anita, what more can you tell us about the, this collaboration between the Massachusetts Cultural Council and the Department of Transitional Assistance and over 400 cultural institutions. Well, first of all, um, our cultural organizations in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and the Mass Cultural Council supports 400 nonprofit cultural organizations in the arts, humanities, and interpretive sciences. And these organizations are so generous on a daily basis. First of all, if you buy a ticket, a full price ticket, you're really only paying for a third of what it costs to make the experience. So our organizations every single day have to go out and fundraise and raise additional money to make sure that their programs are accessible to everybody in the Commonwealth. But always wanting to reach more audiences and particularly people who wouldn't think that they might be able to attend a symphony concert or walk into an art museum and see a master work of art. Our organizations have been asking, how do we do a better job of reaching these people? And the riddle, the fundamental question is, how do you know who you don't know? Mm. We can put flyers out, we can put advertisements out, we can make announcements, please come. But if we don't have the email addresses or we don't have the names and don't know how to reach our audiences that have not walked through the door yet, it can make it a real challenge. Mm. So the secret key, the magic key that solved this riddle was discovering the Division of Transitional Assistance. This is a state agency, as you said, that issues the EBT card. These are 800,000 people in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts who are at about 150 percent of the poverty line. They're struggling every single day financially to put food on the table, to pay for their uh, rent or their room and board, and they don't have a lot of additional um, discretionary resources to do things like go to museums and concerts. And these are the very people that really would appreciate and really benefit from an experience at the symphony or in a museum or in a theater. So by creating this partnership with the Division of Transitional Assistance, they have solved the problem. They have become the bridge between our organizations and this wonderful audience that is so eager to be participating. So a year and a half ago, we created the partnership. We put an all call out to our organizations and said, who would be willing to accept the EBT card for free or deeply reduced admissions any time, not just one day a week, not just Friday afternoons, not just third Thursdays or something like that, any time that anybody else can come to the concert or go to the museum, would you be willing to accept an EBT card admission? In one week, a hundred organizations said, we'll do it. And now a year and a half later, we have more than 160 nonprofit cultural organizations in every corner of the Commonwealth who have signed up for this program. That's great. Now. People vote with their feet. In that same amount of time, a quarter of a million EBT card holders have taken advantage of this wow. and gone to concerts and gone to museums. And just think about that for one minute, because I don't know how you feel at the end of the day. You may want to go to the concert or the museum, but a lot of us are just tired. We just <laughs> want to go home and sit on the couch. These are people who struggle right. every single day. And they have said to the tune of 250,000 people, I want a cultural experience. Those numbers sound like a good measure of success. Are there other, are there other ways that you're measuring the success of the program? Yes, a storytelling. And I'm going to tell a story because this is my all-time <laughs> favorite story and it's about the Boston Symphony <clears throat> Orchestra. And it, it's a story that tells 
chapter one, which is connecting our organizations with these audiences, with holders of EBT card, but it also tells chapter two of the story. So there was a, um, a student in the middle school in Boston, and he went to school one day, and the teacher said, how would you like to sign up for the orchestra at school? Which instrument would you like to play? And the young man looked at his teacher and he said, I've never heard an orchestra. Mm. I don't know which instruments there even are to choose mm. from. He went home and he told his mom she had just found out about the EBT card, the culture story, and she knew she could go to the Boston Symphony Orchestra with her EBT card. So she took her son and they went to Boston Symphony. Now, that's chapter one. We got them in the door. The most important part is what happened next. Mm. The mother and her son go to the Boston Symphony and the usher immediately recognizes that this is a new visitor. This is maybe somebody who's never been here before and really leaned in to be welcoming. The mother told the usher the story of why they were there and the usher said, well, we need to get you closer to those musical instruments and maybe hear a few of them so that you can decide which one you'd like to play. She took the young man and his mother down to the front of the hall. They got up close to the musicians and the instruments. The in the musicians demonstrated some of the instruments. He zeroed in on the cello. Mm. The cellist played a little bit more for him. And the mother has tears streaming down her face. Mm. So this is really a story first of making the connection and inviting these audiences into the doors of our organizations. But as importantly is what happened next. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I think that story just illustrates, um, it's representative of one of, of dozens of stories that happen um, you know, every week uh, with, between our patrons and our staff, because our staff and, at the VSO really does uh, sort of embody the mission um, of, of community engagement and um, treating all audiences uh, as, our, as our value guests. And so. we were talking beforehand about uh, how these aren't exactly new audiences for uh, the Boston Symphony Orchestra, and uh, uh, by that I mean low-income uh, people who, you know, may uh, may not have full access mm -hmm. to the arts and to your organization, um, because you have been doing outreach, similar outreach before this program. Um, what what kinds of outreach was the uh, Boston Symphony Orchestra doing before mm -hmm. the uh, EBT program, mm -hmm. uh, or con continues to do? Mm -hmm. Um, well, we are very engaged with our community through community partnerships, um, and in this particular case, community ticketing programs. Uh, and so we like to, to invite our, our friends and our neighbors um, to concerts as often as they're able to come. And so I think it was, it was very interesting when we, we were one of the first groups to jump on board with the EBT um, card because, again, it was so mm -hmm. in alignment with our mission. Um, but it was really interesting for us to start getting emails and calls from some of our longtime partners saying, oh, you know, I, I noticed that, um, that you're, off, you're participating in this EBT program. How does that impact our partnership? So it was gratifying to know that actually we were already um, you know, engaged uh, with, with these communities, and we knew that sort of uh, anecdotally. But I think what the EBT card allowed us to do was to really zero in um, and be very intentional about working uh, with, with these communities in a way that um, it just enhances the enhances our relationship and enhances their experience mm. as well. So we're really grateful to the MCC for providing that platform. I had an uh, uh, incidental opportunity to be over at the Boston Symphony, <coughs> and I was bragging about the symphony and telling the story, <laughs> which I love this story. It's my favorite story. And um, I was getting ready to leave, and this woman comes up to me, and she says, I was that usher that oh, greeted wow. mm -hmm. this couple when they came in. And I couldn't believe it. And she <laughs> says, you know what? This is the way we try to work at the Boston Symphony. Mm -hmm. This is the way we train our ushers. A lot of people could be coming in the door for the very first time. And if you're a first time visitor to the Boston Symphony, imagine what that must be like. I've never been here before. I don't know what I'm supposed to wear. I don't know if I'm supposed to make a noise. I don't, like, do they have a <clears throat> place to get a drink of water? I mean, just the whole experience can be overwhelming for somebody who's never had an opportunity to go to symphony concert before. and. The first impression, that reception that a person receives, typically from front of house or an mm -hmm. usher, mm -hmm. is going to make all the difference in whether they come back, right. whether they have a good experience, or whether they don't. And so you are an exemplar in terms of really <laughs> taking advantage of and owning and recognizing that the training of the front of house staff, and mm -hmm. really everybody top to bottom in the organization who could encounter somebody who's coming for the first time or the 50th time, um, feels like it's their home. Mm. Exactly. And I think one of my favorite stories, I mean, that is definitely one of my favorite stories, <laughs> but, but, it, but sort of something that surprised us a little bit um, 
was the patron, the gentleman that went up to, I think, that same usher um, and said, you know, it's, I, I used to come to concerts all the time before my circumstances changed, and it's so wonderful to have a slice of my old life back. Mm. And that just, you know, that, that really sort of hit home mm -hmm. for all of us, realizing that, that this experience, um, you know, is meaningful to people on so many different levels, um, whether they're the first, time, the first time visitor or someone for whom um, this is just a, has been a way of life that, that maybe they haven't been able to access for mm. a while. You know, that's so, so resonant because, um, we, as I said, we collect stories. We collect numbers. We love numbers, but we really, really love you, stories. You're in the arts. You collect <laughs> numbers. <laughs> and this, I, I, you can't overstate really the power of what you just said because people who are uh, receiving an EBT card, it's called the Division of Transitional Assistance. Mm -hmm. And what that means is these are people in transition. You know, this could be any one of us. Mm -hmm. There could have been overwhelming medical expenses. There could have been an accident that you couldn't go to work anymore. You could be furloughed, right. and we can maybe even talk about that in mm -hmm. a few minutes, or lose your job for some reason. And suddenly, your life changes completely. Absolutely. And things that, and habits and things that you used to enjoy that you just can't afford to do anymore. And when you have an opportunity, the to experience them again. One of the other uh, notes that we got from one of the people who went to one of our organizations said, it just made things feel normal mm -hmm. for a minute. <clears throat> That's great. And Anita did mention um, the furloughed workers, mm -hmm. the federal, uh, the federal uh, shutdown mm -hmm. result, resulting in some furloughed federal employees. Right. Um, and we just recently heard uh, that the Boston Symphony Orchestra is extending mm -hmm. uh, this same free ticket offer to those employees. Right, exactly. I mean, it was a no-brainer, to mm -hmm. be honest with you. Um, it's just what we do. This is our community. We're, we're not only um, an arts organization with sort of a global brand, if I can say that, mm -hmm. um, but we're a neighbor and we're a community partner and we're a community member and we, you know, we need to take care of our friends and neighbors. And, and um, so it was just, it was a very obvious choice. It was an easy choice. Mm. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention, so we, we think about performances or we think about admission to a museum, and these are amazingly wonderful experiences. Um, but a lot of our organizations are also um, doing some deep discounts on classes or tuition, mm. whether it's an art class or a dance class. And again, these are opportunities to um, have a healthy arts experience to kind of rebuild your life if you're struggling for mm. a time. Um, and I should also say that um, even before we launched the EBT Card to Culture program, uh, we do a lot of collection of data <laughs> from our organizations. And most people are not aware that among our portfolio of 400 nonprofit cultural organizations, even before EBT Card, every single year, they were collectively giving away more than 9 million free admissions hmm. to our constituents. That's amazing. And that speaks to uh, the core of this program. I think. Um, and is there a precedent for, for this program in other states and other municipalities that well, you looked at when, when putting this together? Well, first of all, we're so proud to say they're starting to copy us now. <laughs> <laughs> we got a call from New Jersey, um, and they're hoping to launch their EBT uh, Card to Culture program. You know, it's interesting. I want to give some credit to the, I call her the mother of this program. That's Carol Charno at the Boston Children's Museum. Mm. She lifted this program from London. She was visiting <laughs> London, and um, people who were unemployed or out of work had an opportunity to go to the theater and other places at deep discount. So she came back to Boston and discovered the EBT card. And we had a few organizations. Museum of Science was another one that has been doing it for quite some time. And when I found out that they were doing this, I said, gosh, this is a great idea. So I invited uh, Carol to come and do a webinar for our field. And I think we had close to 100 organizations sign up for the webinar. And so she was explaining how they ran the program and what difference it made in terms of people coming to the Children's Museum. And our field said to us, OK, Anita, why don't you do something to make this easy for us to do this statewide? It then took us. I hate to admit it, two years to find the Division of Transitional Assistance. Oh. We're in government, but government can be a very <laughs> complicated place to navigate. And it took us a while to figure out which was that agency mm. that issued the EBT cards. Once we found it, they were thrilled. And with it, literally within a matter of weeks, we were able to launch the program. Um, there are other national um, efforts at this. Um, I think American Association of Museums, uh, national museum organizations have encouraged their organizations to accept the EBT card. But truthfully, it has not been nearly as successful as we are here 
because they don't have the partner. Mm -hmm. If you don't have mm -hmm. the partner that connects to the people, just having it posted in your, you know, on your list of, of costs of admission, EBT card, if you don't get the people in the door to see that, it's not going to make a difference. So it really did require this partnership between our agency and Division of Transitional Assistance. The other thing I really do want to emphasize is there are so much generosity amongst our field, and then there are other uh, philanthropic organizations mm -hmm. like the Highland Foundation that fund Free Fund Fridays, and then there are other um, certain days that you can go and get in free or discounted days. Right, I think like the MFA, it's Wednesday. Right, and, uh, MFA the is another EBT card organization. Mm -hmm. What we were really looking for and what the commitment that we asked from our organizations to be part of this is we didn't want a special separate day. Mm. We wanted the EBT card holders to come whenever they could. Maybe they work on Fridays. Maybe you know they can't come on that special free day. And we also hear from our organizations truthfully that most of the people who take advantage of the free days are coming the other days too. <laughs> 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 so in order to bring in the new audience and to say, you come when it's convenient for you to come to the museum. You know, you come to the um, concert when they're having a concert that you want to come in here, as opposed to this is the only day you can do it. We sort of have a philosophy of rather than special things for special people in a little box over here, we're into access for all. So in terms of outreach um, to reach these audiences, what, what are you doing? Is it is it more than... I imagine it's more than just an email list. Um, you know, what, what sort of engagement are you doing to let EBT cardholders know about the program? So we have put that in the hands of the Division of Transitional Assistance mm -hmm. because they know who the EBT cardholders are. So they have 22 regional offices across the Commonwealth. They promote the program in their regional offices. They have television screens where they have kind of rolling information. They hand out flyers. Mm -hmm. uh, they do, when they um, deliver information to their EBT cardholders, um, they um, make sure that they know about this program. There's a website on the Division of Transitional Assistance web page so you can see all the organizations and what the discounts are and then mm. we have that as well. But there's a lot more that we can be doing. Um, we've already discovered that you know among um, frequent users of this um, approach are a lot of seniors uh, who mm. have EBT cards. Mm -hmm. And um, there's been some discussion among the Division of Elder Affairs and other senior organizations that they're noticing that their seniors are really taking advantage of that. Now think about that for a minute because oftentimes seniors are lonely, they're isolated, um, they have acres of free time and nothing to do which can lead to depression and other negative health consequences. So having just this little nudge to you know get out of the house and, and go take advantage of one of the cultural offerings is quite frankly a health benefit mm. and a preventive uh, benefit to a lot of our seniors and other people who take advantage of it. Mm. We're exploring now who else should we be talking to? Should we be talking to social workers? Who are the other intermediaries between people who are families in need and who are struggling and um, our cultural organizations? But I have to say whatever Division of Transitional Assistance has done so far it seems to be working rather <laughs> well. Mm. <laughs> and I want to pick up on that and, and support that um, that approach towards um, attending arts and cultural cultural events um, as a health measure, mm. uh, because it's it's a um, a method of self care that I think goes beyond um, just what people traditionally think of in terms of taking care of one's physical needs. Um, I think having that shared experience within a community, um, that meditative uh, that opportunity to just sort of sort of live in the moment and and have a meditative space mm. and to share that experience with other people, whether you go to the concert alone or not. Um, you are having that, that shared experience, which does address um, the, sort of the, the issues of isolation. Um, and so for us, that's a measure of success as well. Um, it's, it's statistical, but it's also knowing um, just, just by seeing who's in the audience that, um, that they're able to access um, that kind of unique experience that uh, concert going can give. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I think I've read at least 20 times in the last three months, the number one epidemic in America is loneliness mm -hmm. and isolation and that is you can sit at home I guess and listen to music on your your phones or your iPod but that's not that community experience mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. not that social experience that you get when you actually get to go to a concert and and sit in a hall with everybody sort of in rapt listening and reacting uh, mm -hmm. to the music mm -hmm. or to the play that they're hearing or standing and looking at a painting in a museum next to somebody else and both of you sort of Having, having a, 
uh, unified human experience yeah. in reality. It's connectedness. Yes, mm -hmm. that's exactly mm -hmm. what it is. Mm -hmm. That's very well put. <laughs> <laughs> and so is that where the future of this program lies, is um, in creating more opportunities for this connectedness? Yes, that is definitely where the future of the program lies. So we are currently, uh, again, building our intermediaries, you know, working with anybody who could be an intermediary to people with the EBT card. Uh, but we don't think this is the last and only um, um, device, if mm. we would consider the EBT card a device, uh, that's out there and that's uh, possible. And so we have a few other irons in the fire, which I'm not ready to talk about yet, but hopefully <laughs> we'll be able to expand this um, quite uh, um, dramatically, in, hopefully in the very near future. Very nice. Um, and so why don't we take a moment to talk about what your organizations are doing at the moment, what we could look forward to soon and maybe later in the year. Um, what, what's going on in the Boston Symphony Orchestra? Oh my gosh. Well, <laughs> 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 what isn't going on at the Boston Symphony Orchestra? Um, as I was saying before, um, we are, we're never not in a season. Uh, so right now we're in the spring symphony season, but mm -hmm. um, we are always planning six months to a year in advance. Uh, six months is actually not even planning six months, we're, we're executing six months in advance and planning a year in advance. Um, so we're looking forward to spring pops and uh, tankwood season. And actually, um, I don't think I've even told Anita this, <laughs> but um, this uh, for this spring pops series, we're doing our first sensory friendly oh, and nice. autism friendly concert oh, very um, nice. for, for families um, and children who are, who are on the spectrum. So we're very excited about that. So again, expanding um, your expanding. audiences. Expanding, exactly. Exactly. I have to jump in on that because I don't know if this answers your question, <laughs> but um, this is a perfect example of uh, another uh, accessibility initiative that mm. we launched, I think it was probably three or four years ago, which is our UP program, a universal participation. And it's really, we have a cohort of more than 50 organizations that is part of a learning network to figure out how we can be more accessible to people who have various, various barriers, whether it's physical barriers to participation, um, economic, cultural barriers. And we have a whole new class of UP um, organizations that are going to be joining us next week. Mm. Um, and one of the things that we do that I think is really a, a powerful part of this program is engaging the help of what we call user experts. These are people who have lived experience navigating their world in a wheelchair or perhaps with hearing impairments or visual impairments. And um, when you mentioned the Century um, um, concert that mm -hmm. you're going to be doing, um, these are wonderful ways to expand uh, opportunities for people to interact with your cultural product. And when you do that, as you know, but I'll say it anyway, mm -hmm. it's not just people who are visually impaired right. who participate in the tactile experience. Everybody wants to do that. Mm -hmm. So when you add a feature to your um, your cultural offerings that makes it accessible to one part of the audience, it actually opens the doors to everybody. That's great. And this this program and uh, the initiatives that organizations like the Boston Symphony Orchestra are are doing, it it I I feel like um, Massachusetts is synonymous with art and art and the arts. Um, and I feel like it's programs like these that help reinforce that. All right, I want to thank you both for coming in today. Anita Walker from the Massachusetts Cultural Council and Leslie Wu Foley from the Boston Symphony Orchestra. And if you want more information about the EBT Card to Culture program, you can look it up at this website that is up on your screen right now. And we encourage you, uh, if you are an EBT card holder, to take part in this program. It's really amazing.